also hi simon hi asta i'm glad that you by to have joined uh we'll share wait for other people for two three minutes meantime let's have some introductions i know because for you people this class is um as in the repetition of introductions in every class isn't it every new teacher who comes in would probably be asking you for introductions is that so yeah <laughs> but it's okay it's always nice to know like different uh, professors yeah we would also like to know you so ask us something about yourself uh, about simon i think you people would know better simon yesterday told me he's a medical professional trying to do journalism am i uh, remembering it right simon yes that's correct thank you so asa you work in a newsroom you have something closer to the indian accent in your speech so please tell us about <laughs> i am <laughs> yeah you know uh, more than 70% uh, population in mauritius is of like of indian, indian uh, diaspora of indian origin but i am half indian because my mom is from kashmir i am like okay. my dad is mauritian and and yeah so that's why i have this accent and yeah i, I work as a, a new senior news editor uh, for the public radio and tv station in mauritius um mm -hmm. uh, mauritius broadcasting corporation for the last 17 years yeah but my my qualification is like i have uh, never done anything into communication i've done an mba so now to get you know um to get promoted and to to grow in your career you need uh to have these uh like uh, something in media and communication so oh, that's why i joined this is program. a discovery for me why would a management graduate need a degree in uh, media for her job promotions this is this is something it is a whole it is a parastatal government owned uh, you know uh, media how just like doordarshan in in uh, in india so we have our own systems here so uh, unfortunately my mba doesn't count for future growth yeah so yeah but it's always oh, nice because yeah, you know I, i'm sure your mba would still be helping you in your professional and personal life it has been helping uh, immensely yes it has been helping i am so glad and similarly for simon i believe that medical as well as journalistic education together would give him a better perspective on things yes of course of course there is a, there is science communication in my country as a profession so that's what i want to go into oh science communication is an upcoming uh, area in i think globally and it would actually if you yeah. take that uh, thing it would help you professional uh, international growth also that's exactly where i want to go <laughs> good good i'm glad to know that uh, so good to know you simon and asta we also have been joined by elena and amunal amunial i sorry if i'm pronouncing the names correctly or wrongly i don't know so glad to have you gondwe is here he was here yesterday also so can you please say hi to the group uh, elena elena and please also tell me the correct pronunciation for your name alena my name is alena can you please switch on your mic and speak for us from uganda i'm glad i'm in a saloon and it is really noisy but i am a senior news editor in radio station uh so alena i don't know he or she i really don't know the names but glad okay So Elena is a senior news editor in a sal salon, so we don't expect you to switch on the audio. But I'm glad that you can still join. So while you are getting your um, beauty treatments done, we'll be glad that you can put on your earphones and contribute to the media ethics learning. Thank you. And the others, please, uh, do you want to switch on the mic or the video and talk to us? We've been uh, joined by six people, and I think good time to start the class. Amunal and Gong Gondwe, uh, please excuse my pronunciation. So my name is Padmini. Uh, I'm Dr. Padmini Jain. I specialize in advertising. I am the course coordinator for this course, and I am also the program coordinator for the MA program. Up, some of you might have joined the diploma. If you plan to do the degrees, I'll be your coordinator. So we have these four classes to discuss the subject on media ethics and laws. thank you for all of you for joining uh, this is the second class today yesterday we had some people who joined us we have some new people who joined us today 
so i think i did give my introduction yesterday but just as a basic thing for everybody who's come in today i'm more friendly with you today than i was yesterday so i think i'll uh, tell you guys about myself a little i have been with ignau since 2009 and i have actually i have a background in um, psychology and then i shifted to advertising because i specialized in consumer behavior and industrial organizational psychology so india has uh, many states and i belong to a state called punjab so punjab basically is dominated by a religion which is sikhism and there are also other two religions hindus and muslims who are existing in punjab we have christianity but in a very minor uh, number in punjab as a state that's just to give you a cultural overview so in my state uh, there is the state capital chandigarh that's where i did my education so i have my post graduation in psychology from the state university there and then i went on to do some research in psychology then i joined google uh, google was coming to india and we as indians did join i joined google as an advertising professional and i did move to mass communication then and as i told you i specialized in advertising as a student and then i started working as an advertising professional apart from google i have also worked with another uh, organization which is mudra communications which is again uh, a big ad agency in india here it is owned by uh, the reliance group and um, from there on i moved on to teaching because i really wanted to be a teacher i did teach at the regular university for some time before coming to ignau in 2019 sorry 2009 so it's almost been 17 years that i've been taking post graduate university classes do my uh, area or my domain of study is advertising but media ethics and laws is something that none of us can escape be it the newsroom like asta be it the medico generally like profession like simon is trying to do or be it an advertising professional like padmini that is me yesterday we did talk about some classes uh, i hope that you have an overview of how igno functions how you are supposed to be doing this masters program if there are any confusions about that i'll be really glad to uh, undertake those today we are looking almost as a 2 hour class and i'm looking at covering uh, almost 6 units of your course which is media ethics and laws this is just a brief about me a brief about the course now when we were designing this course when we were getting the units composed in the videos being recorded we did it with an indian perspective little did we know that this program would be offered at a global level and you people from different uh, countries would actually be joining this under the e vidya bharti project so this course particularly has been written with indian context so the examples or maybe the laws that you would find are being quoted from the indian constitution so yesterday we tried to give it an international and a global feel by taking in discussions and i'm really glad at all my friends who joined yesterday and did give us examples from your countries your nations how it happens there and your understanding of media ethics with your cultural perspectives so why i told you that i'm from india and punjab and my background because this is how our ethical uh things intervene you know culturally also ethics take on different meanings so in mauritius the laws would be different but also culturally how asta has been brought up her ethics would be a little different from what simon in his country would be thinking or what elane at uganda is thinking or what padmini in india is thinking so cultural context also shape our ethical perspectives and of course the laws in all the countries are different so when we be talk of media these laws these self regulatory bodies and the ethics are different so yesterday being the first class we went a little slow and then there was some technical glitch in the end we were able to cover two units of this whole course now friends i think you would understand that each uh, course that you given is broadly divided into four blocks and there are 14 to 18 units in each course this course has 15 units so my task broadly in four classes is to just give you an overview of each unit rest you are all grown up professionals and we are re really glad that with your rich experience you come and do this course uh, you would bring in more uh, substance to it than we can as individuals offer so as a group our learning would be very fruitful i would again urge you to give me feedback wherever i'm speaking whatever if there's something which uh, is not very clear and also keep intervening because this class is not limited to my limited knowledge i am one human being who has learned through her course of life 
But of course, you bring in a lot of rich experiences yourself. So I really enjoyed yesterday's class because even I learned a lot. So today my target is to cover six units and approximately it's been 15 minutes in the class. We have uh, one hour, uh, say, 40 minutes more. So 15 to 20 minutes, I'll cover each unit. And then we'll also keep interacting along the way. And uh, we'll keep giving feedbacks. So I will try while I'm, with, I'm on the presentation, I'll switch on the camera. Uh, sorry, switch off the camera so that you can have a concentrated view of the PowerPoint that I prepared for you. And when we are interacting, I'll kind of switch on the camera so that we can look at each other. And I would be glad if even you can switch on your cameras while we are interacting. It would be really nice to look at you and, you know, have this personal interaction and feeling through the class. This is just a brief about it. We'll go with the content and begin. Before that, anything that you people need to say, most welcome. Please keep speaking so that I feel we are on the same tangent. Because it's very easy in online classes to switch off, go to sleep. If the teacher is boring, you can just write me off. So it is good to know if you are still with me. So you can either keep writing in chat box, you can switch on your mic, switch on your video, and keep the interaction coming. One question, is my screen visible to all of you? I switched on the presentation. Yes. Thank you, Asma. I'm glad to have a woman in this here. Yesterday, it was a very male-dominated class. So I was in the minority. Today, I'm glad that there is someone. Are there any more women in the class today? Yes, Elian. Elian is here. The one, uh, uh, she, she said salon. she cannot. Yeah. Hi, Elian. So Elian. this is how I, we pronounce her name. I was sorry I was pronouncing it wrongly. Yeah. So Elian and Asta. Okay, thank you for the girl power here. Yeah. <laughs> Eliana Asta, and I think we have three boys here, Emmanuel, Gwande, and Simon. All three of them were here yesterday. So glad to have all of you. So I'm switching on to the screen. Anything that you people need to say, please keep saying. Just a quick recap. Yesterday, we looked at Unit 1, which was what are ethics? How do we define them? Why do we need the ethics while in media, as media professionals? And we just looked at ethics and self-regulation, their need, and the context. Today, we will look at self-regulation along with the ethics. I will briefly, in 10 to 15 minutes, go through the contents of the unit. I'll just summarize it. See, it would be a better thing if you have already seen the units, you've gone through them, and you can ask me questions. But I suppose we're all busy professionals. We probably didn't have time to go through the study material. Or did we go through the study material? Friends, interaction, please. Am I going too fast? Should I reduce my vol uh, volume? Is it very shrill? Should I reduce my speed? Because I can go as fast as chat GPT. I can be this fast. So you need to actually tell me, ma'am, slow down the speed, slow down the volume so that you have a fruitful class. The feedback, please. As for me, the volume is okay. And even the speed, I, I like the pace. The pace is just uh, so superb for me on, on my part. Okay, thank you. Others, please. Any feedbacks on speed, pace, tone, volume? We need this class to be fruitful. You're, 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 you're going good, ma'am. Media professionals are very loud anyway. <laughs> well, I always loud. say we are quick and loud. It's okay. Your, yeah, your tone and the speed is nice. It's, 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 okay. it's yeah, right. Uh, in India, yeah. we have started saying that media professionals are dramatic. These days, we see a lot of drama <laughs> happening on our <laughs> television. So they actually come like, oh, this is the breaking news. And today we shall show you this. So it's more of drama than of only loudness. I will tone down the uh, volume a little. So I think I'll take that. As no, a it's not. It's not. No, that was a, a, a bad comment, ma'am. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. We, we are known for that. It's... <laughs> Thank you, guys. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so unit Sorry? three is what we should. Thank you. Thank you. I'm saying cool. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. And if in between you need to tell me something, we are all open, right? So it is two hours dedicated to you. And I expect you to be dedicated to me. We might take a break in 30, 40 minutes. Whenever it gets too much, we'll take a two-minute break or a five-minute break. As you people, please, right? So we'll discuss unit three, which is media ethics and self-regulations. The screen is visible to you. Everything is visible. I'll just switch on the uh, mode. Okay. 
Uh, so as I told you yesterday, Negro, we try and give you a unit structure at the beginning of each unit because you're sitting far away and you're not attending regular classes. It's very easy to get lost. So there is a difference between reading a book and reading a unit or a chapter from Egenau. We try and inbuilt the teacher in the chapter. You would have known it by now because you've been dealt with with many of my colleagues and my other faculty members from School of Journalism have already been dealing with the different subjects. So in this unit, the broad structure that we follow, we shall talk about. See, the structure is just to give you an idea before you begin reading a unit, that what all will be discussed here. The concept of self-regulation, the code of ethics given by canons of journalism and the Commission on Freedom of Press, these are the two that we shall be dealing with. Essential ethical values, like someone yesterday said that some ethical values are universal, some might culturally vary. The emerging ethical areas, which are diversity, sensitivity, advocacy, digital media, citizen journalism, and the use of hidden cameras. Now, these are new areas which have emerged in the last decade or so. These were not existing in 90s. So a class on ethics in 90s would not talk of digital media or probably, uh, you know, things like citizen journalism because coming of the new media has brought all this. So this is something broadly in the next 10 minutes, we shall cover all these topics. So I begin with a very basic introduction in this, that in the previous units, we tried to define ethics. And most of us did agree that ethics are rational and systematic principles, sometimes values, or even norms that determine that what is good, what is bad, what is correct, what is not right, what is wrong. As human actions are concerned, we are all humans and we are governed by societal laws and or certain norms. Even if there are no laws, even if there is no policing, there is still a certain sense of right and wrong, which as social beings, we are supposed to be adhering to. So this is broadly the ethics that we understand, the rational principles behind them. Yesterday, we had a debate for uh, people who were not here yesterday, Alina and Asta and others. We did debate the concept that my right can be your wrong and vice versa. We did also debate, some of us were of the opinion that consequences can justify the action. If my end consequence as a media professional, as a reporter, as a journalist, is to unearth a scam or to bring to light some, some crime, criminal activity, then my means of intruding into privacy of a person by using hidden cameras or sting operations can be justified. However, some of us, yesterday the class was divided on the view that no, you have to inform the person if you are intruding in their privacy. So do the and means justify the action or not? Again, it's a matter of debate and open to everyone for interpretation. Right? So yesterday we did discuss all these concepts. Today we shall examine the universal tenets of journalism as essential shared values. One of our friends yesterday in the class did say that some values are universal, even if there can be cultural and contextual differences. Some are still good. And he did give an example of kindness altruism, helpfulness, being right, right? And we also touched upon trauma literacy of trauma uh, journalism, trauma literacy for journalists on, as a concept, where you people did say that here we, in the, your country also, if there is a natural calamity like an earthquake or a, say a tsunami or some cloud burst, or there is a war-like situation or riots. So newspapers, news websites should or should not be publishing you know, pictures of dead bodies or things which might be very traumatic for the re readers. So again, the class was divided yesterday on the view that it is a right of the public. The public holds the right. As a journalist, this is my duty to report what is happening. But yes, I can tone down the trauma a little. So these are all ethical things that we did discuss yesterday. And today we will look at the essential shared values which are globally accepted as ethics. Through the discussion, we shall also try to explain how media ethics and self-regulation are interlinked and whether media professionals should actually be following ethical principles and norms, whether this will lead to self-regulation or we need to be governed by law. So friends, you might say, oh, we are educated people. We can self-regulate. I know what is right or wrong. Why do I need laws? So yesterday in the class, we did see that there can be capitalistic 
pressures they can be market pressures they can be political uh, you know conflicts of interest they can be political loyalties towards a certain party or a certain ruler which might prompt media professionals to compromise on the ethics so now while we will learn these are the learning outcomes that i expect you to be knowing after the chapter finishes let me jump to the content Sorry, oh, this presentation. So, okay. Now, what is the concept of self-regulation? Yesterday, we saw what are ethics. But as media professionals, should we be self-regulating ourselves? So, in self-regulation, it's one, an individual regulation. As Padmini, as Asta, as Simon, as Elena, you will have certain concepts of, okay, these are my moral values. These are my ethical standards. But... As an employee of an organization or as a member of a larger working community, you will also have certain regulatory things. These are known as codes. So in India, you have Editors Guilds of India that sets out certain codes for the journalists. You have Advertising Standard Council of India that sets out certain codes for advertiser or a Broadcasting Council of India, which actually sets out codes for the broadcasters. So code is a systematic setup of guidelines or frameworks for standard moral behavior. It probably is an index of what is generally considered desirable by certain professionals. On the other hand, there are laws. Now, law is a set of rules which is established by a social system. It can be judicially challenged. It can lead to punishments under judiciary. And then there are ethics. Ethics do not involve any codes or laws. They have only... No formal sets, but they are actually self-check or self-control. So these are more about personal decisions. So do you get it? As an individual, you are governed by your personal ethics. As a member of a community, of a professional body, you are governed by courts. And as a citizen of a country, you are governed by certain laws. Do you get this three-tier system? Yes, yes. Do you think this is too much of a humor thing on a human being? Why so many regulations, self-regulation, the ethics and codes and laws? Is that it too much for me? Am I free as a human being to, you know, practice journalism or any other thing? Is so much needed? Your views, please. Well, I, I think we cannot entirely depend on personal judgment. Uh, and the assumption that uh, human beings are able to make rational judgments and then maybe to leave them to conduct themselves in their own way would, would definitely lead to chaos. Uh, that's why you need, firstly, we need uh, this per personal ethics and this community code uh, of conduct and eventually the laws. It is necessary. It's not too much. It is necessary. It is necessary, of course. Yes. And I also put in one more thing. Your standard of ethics would be different than mine. Being females, being males, even the gender standard of ethics that the society makes uh, for us are different. Self-regulation would be different culturally and personally. So if we were all to follow our self or our own limited ideas of ethics and codes, it would be an anarchy. So we all need certain uniform guidelines to govern us. And therefore, the laws are also needed. I hope we are all in agreement to this, right? Yes, uh, I, I agree with what uh, you are saying and what maybe Simon has also uh, rightly put it. Because uh, as you are saying, we people have got uh, different backgrounds, culturally, uh, traditionally, and all those things. So if we, I may say, for instance, I bring my cultural background into my uh, profession, I mean, mm -hmm. what would do other people say? What, 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 what would other people I mean, think of what I'm doing? Because culturally, maybe that would be okay with me. But uh, uh, with other people, that would be, I mean, wrong. I mean, as we are to follow ethics, fine. codes, and the even laws, yes. Very fine. Very, very nicely put. Yes. And we can see that, you know, we belong to different countries, cultures, and even different religions. Even the religions do govern our ethical or moral values. In certain religions, it is good to cover the head. Right. Even in India, there are certain states where females usually cover their head when they go in front of the elders. This might not be culturally accepted in certain other countries or certain other religions. So you can't rely on these uh, different things which vary. 
so there has to be a uniform uh, law so we will deal with laws in the next unit here about codes of ethics so there are various codes of conduct have been formulated by different bodies and institutions from time to time like i gave you an example of editors guild or advertising standard council or broadcasting council according to a unesco report more than 370 codes of practices are said to be listed by international press council in different parts of the world even internationally you have different codes of ethics like you rightly pointed out because we are culturally different we would need different codes of ethics some media organizations prefer to use the term codes of practice some call it codes of ethics some might even call it code of conduct whatever be the nomenclature they are all aimed at developing a responsible attitude that journalistic duties are to be practiced in so for journalistic journalist uh, practices and responsible behavior code of conduct code of ethics code of practice whatever you name it there are various and different ones in different countries now the one that we would actually want to point out today is canons of journalism this as far as we remember was the first code of ethics for journalists it was adopted as early as 1910 by united states in the kansas editorial association and this is written by w e miller so more or less this was universally accepted because earlier in those days no codes of ethics were existing and can you say why didn't we need any journalistic codes before 1910 can you think of a reason why 1910 why not in 1600 we had a journalistic code of ethics i think it's more when uh, globalization came you know okay ma'am can you hear me any other view yeah. okay thank you asta and then and then the online media and then the 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 whole vast of of um tools of of uh, communication started to you know to mm -hmm. emancipate Okay. Yeah. Then the need of more laws. Very right. Yeah. As the society keeps progressing, you have needs that get developed. So I'll correct you a little here. Not globalization. The invention of the printing press. Before that, there were no newspapers because we were not printing on a larger scale. Only when a type was invented by Johannesburg and when printing press came, were we able to publish newspapers and printed material and books. That's when we also started publishing advertisements. so when the profession started growing so your reasoning is very correct with the advent of more of journalism you needed to regulate the profession before that there were no newspapers so no regulation was needed right so kansas code largely focused on advertising and this was called advertising policies so forthright and fair news and forthright and fair advertisements so newspapers were in the shape of pamphlets or distributed the so there was this code and then came a radio code which was adopted in 1928 now as you write as globalization not but as industrialization came newspapers came we needed a code for journalists radio came we needed a code for uh, governing the radio coverage when television came we did require a code for television news coverage right then gradually we had a commission so uh, if this is a question in your exam you would be able to say that canons of journalism were adopted when in 1910 if somebody asks you why not before that of course you can say because before that this profession did not have a formal existence only when industrialization typography printing happened we required this and gradually after print we had codes for newspaper uh, radio for television and of course as you have rightly put today we need even codes for digital media so there was a commission on freedom of press which says the press must provide truthful comprehensive and intelligent account of a day's events in the context that gives meaning to them now friends this definition seems very nice very good very harmless but the problem lies here in the word context the context varies with individuals it varies with each person it varies with the situation and along with context comes something very important which is perception so your perception about the same thing will be different from mine and it will 100% be different because we are two very different human beings and all of you who are married any married people in this group yes we are there 
we are we are <laughs> so we experience this day in and day out on the same thing the husband and wife would be fighting why not because they hate each other because they are enemies but because their context of understanding and their perception varies isn't it because they are two different human beings even though they are sharing a life today their past experiences past learning their own individual personalities clash so when in such a close relationship which is that of matrimony we can fight and have different perspectives how can we have the same perspective when we are so many professionals so many different persons working towards one profession i don't know if it was a good example or a bad one but i hope it made the concept clear <laughs> so commission and freedom of press actually says the press must serve as a forum for exchange of comment and criticism it should project representative picture of the constituent groups of the society and these constituent groups like we discussed yesterday don't need to be only the majority groups even the minority groups where whether it is religious minority or communal minority or a gender minority or any other kind of minority or majority they should all be represented equally fairly in the media the goals and values of the society should be presented and clarified the press should provide full access of a day's events intelligently so these are basic things that commission on freedom of press says but even these basic things need to be contextualized perceived in different manners now what do the canons of journalism stand for you know they stand for basic codes and ethics in journalism what is the role and importance of codes of ethics we all can understand that the role is to make a common free from contexts kind of a platform for all of us to follow right now what are the essential ethical values as a journalist or maybe as any other media professionals i understand that most of you might not be journalists you would go into different kind of media professions somebody will somebody is trying to be a science communicator somebody will actually become a management professional with the media knowledge whatever your responsibility in the media what are the essential ethical values that you are expected to follow owing to these regulatory practices of course accuracy you don't have to distort the facts you need to give them accurately objectivity which means that my own subjective understanding should not interfere with the reporting of the things privacy we would try to maintain the value of privacy for others my being a journalist or a reporter doesn't mean that i can intrude into your personal space and we did discuss examples like celebrities actors politicians or we did discuss case of karina kapoor khan from india or the case of princess diana which we all globally are familiar with the intrusion into privacy even leads to dire circumstances like death of a person so maintaining privacy is a very important ethical issue journalists should try strive to publish news accounts that are balanced accurate relevant they should not interfere into the personal and private space of the people now there are certain known things like you said yesterday universal values accuracy objectivity privacy good enough but there are also certain emerging ethical areas with the societies becoming more complex new issues emerging like asta rightly put it here with the coming of the digital and the online context there are new areas that do need attention the role of the canvas of the media professionals also changing earlier if i was a reporter i would write something my editor had a power of gatekeeping the editor can reject my news story the editor can edit the news story change the tone today with the power of the internet in my hand whatever i think i have the freedom of publishing i can start my own blog i can start my own website i can have as a citizen journalist i can actually put in any photograph on the internet and within seconds and within minutes if i put something on social media a lot of people will have access to it so with this gatekeeping becoming redundant in the age of digital media the role of the media professional is becoming highly challenging the need of self regulation is much more than it was say a decade back do you agree to this earlier we were not the only ones there were a lot of sifting at different uh, levels that would happen but today the range of ethical dilemmas that we face is too much if i put out a simple fake post on my instagram or facebook or any other social media it within seconds it can go viral and we all saw that during covid didn't we 
during covid people were giving okay this is the medical remedy this is a home remedy we had cases of people dying of as a result of doing those uh, fake medical remedies that people like you and me were giving we are not all doctors like simon is i have no medical background but i can be still be free to give medical advice on my social media and if somebody follows me they might have danger of life i would really like to know how is it in your country which of the social media sites you people use generally and is fake news a problem with your part of the world also hello yes you're audible yes uh, just as you are saying uh, and you've, i'm glad you've given a very good example of uh, covid era uh, the same here in my country malawi that was the, the very same things that were happening people were being told to uh drink and eat all sorts of uh liquids and even some mm -hmm. go and even eat some leaves which were deemed then or back then to be poisonous but we were we saw people uh chewing or eating such such leaves and the, unfortunately some people as we were putting it were also succumbing to that and who was so, advising them to do so or was it a doctor where where was advice coming from mostly the advice was where we were the advice were coming from uh the commoners i'll just the wake up one media. day and yes i'll just wake up one day and punch whatever that they are uh, i've heard elsewhere i'll just punch it on the uh internet and the people will be following me yes mm. that was happening yeah so all the people who are putting this advice on their blogs on their youtube channels on their social media would not essentially have the professional acumen to do that but we are all reporters today not necessarily a journalist is not the only reporter we are all reporters we might be in different walks of life i just might be okay so when i sitting in a salon i would give an example i just might be a salon worker and i am free to give you medical advice because there is no gatekeeping right so i am also becoming a mediated uh, media professional without having any knowledge of media because the media is so easy and free now which are the social media sites you people uh, usually follow in malawi is mostly facebook malawi we have facebook twitter facebook twitter uh, yeah largely facebook yes on, on, and of course whatsapp as a whatsapp as, okay yeah others so i think it would be not wrong to say that facebook twitter whatsapp instagram tiktok are the modern age news givers what newspaper was some almost a decade back is now been taken over by these new media sites and with one danger the newspaper had a concept of gatekeeping these sites do not have any concept of gatekeeping we all are free to be media professionals and put our views out there and therefore the concept of self regulation becomes all the more mandatory and necessary for all of us to understand so now why do we need more of self regulation because there is so much of diversity and we need to be sensitive towards each kind of uh, group a diverse group if i take an example of india we are a country of almost 1 and 1/2 billion people and we have a number of regional linguistic religion communal kind of zones and different people come from different dialects languages are being spoken different uh, gods are being worshiped different cultural practices different festivals so we need to be sensitive towards all of them if i don't believe in a particular say a uh, thought process or even a particular religion i should be sensitive not to write against that because there are many people who believe in it people who might have different beliefs than mine necessarily don't have to become people whom i can say anything to i do not have a right or i do not have a moral uh freedom of hurting them therefore we need to be ethically more responsible so there are examples of diversity and sensitivity there are many in my country i'm sure there would be many in your country also where so we have seen that women are projected in very different manner they are being commodified they are being objectified so this is kind of an insensitive behavior towards a particular gender which might say is a weaker gender gradually a lot of talk of equality is happening but traditionally this 
has been a thwarted gender or they can be a minority community also so we do see examples where there are reporting done against them so we need to be sensitive towards such diverse needs another reason why need to uh, have self regulation is about advocacy so advocacy is where a person actually advocates or says arguments in support of something now this can be an advocacy for a particular um, tradition it can be advocacy for a particular religion or it can be advocacy of larger things like uh, certain bills in the parliament so if you need to advocate if you need to say things in support of that you still have to be morally ethically responsible self interest deceit manipulation disregard for others should not creep in in your attempts of advocating as a journalist another concern the emerging concern is about digital media ethics you rightly pointed out asta because of coming of digital and online on new media their radical change has happened in the way that news is collected the news is disseminated of course with social media also so digitally we have to be ethical we do see uh, i we had an example in india of some children committing suicide because they were trolled on their social media somebody strolled because of their body maybe body shaming is happening because of some other thing so teenagers write something against them and teenagers of very sensitive age and people do take it to heart and there have been teenagers committing suicide because some of their friends said things that were insensitive so digital media has made trolling more easy more possible digital media has made another very important issue in our society which is phishing i would like to know if there are incidents of uh, bank frauds of financial uh, illegitimate transactions happening because of digital media in india particularly a lot of digital payment is now happening all our banking or financial things all our payments even if we go to a small vegetable vendor or a cobbler they do accept payments digitally we just scan a qr code which is known as upi unified payment interface and through the qr code we make payments as small as 1 rupee in our currency to as big as lakhs of rupees in our currency and because everything is there digitally on your mobile a lot of scams a lot of uh, phishing attacks a lot of financial irregularities are coming to watch a lot of extortion cases of extortion are happening where people are being blackmailed and digitally they being asked to transfer money do you have such cases happening around you in your communities and your nations as well yes it's that's also very common here in malawi uh due to the coming in of uh, mobile money transactions um where i can maybe make a transaction or uh, 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 money transaction whilst maybe i'm in my village for instance and the, due to the uh literacy levels that are very high more especially in the uh, rural rural areas people are very much prone are getting duped with the, some fraudsters due to uh, the same and also even in, in urban areas urban uh, places the same when you are not as aware people have been duped i mean duped very very uh, uh, hard uh, here now thank you for giving that example from malai and in india we see not only rural areas urban very educated people something had happened to a, uh, just the other day our university professor uh, she got an sms which says that oh you won this lottery of this amount and she was elated oh god is so kind to me i just needed this money and it has come to me and she clicked on that link and whoa gone was all the money from her bank account so even very educated people do fall prey to such things certain so link on your whatsapp or simple sms on your email that yo this, this money is being transferred to your bank account just send us your bank account number and phishing attack is happening and therefore the need of ethics on digital media and also the laws pertaining to digital and uh, online media have to be more stringent now and people need to be educated more on this only not only the uh, media professionals even the citizens and this brings me to another need citizen journalism and ethics related to citizen journalism these says we all have this device this small thing called a mobile phone and in this mobile phone has converged our newspaper our camera our voice recorder anything and everything earlier if i had to spy on you i would need a 
Decathlon. I would need a camera. I would need highly specialized instruments. But today, I can just put my mobile phone in my pocket and I can record anything. And I can be a citizen journalist. So in India, this practice became very, very common, especially in Delhi, when a new government came in. And they said, if any government official asks you for a bribe or does something corrupt, you can record it and send it to the CM and an action would be taken. And this actually became a reality. In the government officials, corruptions came down because citizens were now becoming aware because of this small mobile device. And they were recording everything in and out and they were putting it on the social media. They were shaming people for bad deeds. So on one side, this is a very good practice. But on the other side, this also has to be ethically regulated. Just giving me a freedom with this device in my hand should not be an unregulated freedom. I should, I still need to be aware of if I'm not harming the larger interest of my country, if I'm not hurting the sensitivities of my fellow citizens. So therefore, the need of ethics for citizen journalists is also a very, very important thing. How is citizen journalism in your part of country? Uh, give me other examples. Malaya, I know now some things from Mauritius, from Uganda. Is citizen journalism taking uh, shape? Is it popular? Is it not more, much popular? How is it? Um, I would like to answer. Um, <clears throat> in Mauritius, yes, citizen journalism is taking shape since some years because now we have like uh, uh, online uh, platforms. We, we, we always had Facebook and, uh, you know, uh, Twitter and all. But when uh, like private radio or private news um, uh, media houses started to have their online platforms, they started to give uh, more rise, more space uh, to uh, for citizen journalism. But it has its disadvantages because, you know, it's uh, the, the uh, anyone can can just post anything. You know, we've had we've had cases of, of fake news or trolling or, you know, defamation. So it comes with its advantages and disadvantages. Tomorrow you've, you've had an accident and uh, it, it, you, you are with your family or with a friend and then people just click your picture or oh, big accident and then just post it on, on social media. People know where you are, where you have been or you've you've just it, it's just a joke. You've taken a sick leave from your job. But people just post it on social media, oh, really? so it, it, it has a it, it, it's 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 good and it's not good also because uh, this is where ethics and and laws should come in. Yeah, because really? we take advantage of our of this freedom, which is not always so good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that thing. Yesterday, we also discussed an irresponsible behavior uh, by Indian media. We discussed a case where there was a bomb attack, where there was an attack. Uh, in a hotel and the media not citizen hardcore media channels were giving 24 hour live coverage of that attack and that did help the terrorists plan their next move more inside a campus they could see on the television screen where the police is coming outside where the military is coming and they could actually plan their defenses and the media was very highly criticized at that time Another example, which I will say, uh, uh, taking a cue from your example, there have been cases in India of kidnapping of small children. How? Now, when you have a child and the child is the first day in the school, you're very excited. As a parent, what you would do? I'm dropping my child to the first day of the school and I'm clicking a picture, saying bye to my child, happy first day. And probably a kidnapper is keeping a watch on my Facebook, on my uh, social media, and they are seeing that which school my child went to, what was the time of the child being left, I left and the child is going in, or maybe the time of uh, finishing of the school, and it would become easier for them to maybe kidnap that small child. So sometimes we are also giving our personal private information, ourselves trying to be on the social media. And if I see, I mean, not my generation, but the next generation in India is so much on Instagram or Snapchat, at every moment they need to post a story. They have this concept called FOMO, which is, Fear of missing out. What are my friends doing every moment? So there's, there's a joke. Anything you're eating, you need to put the pictures. Where am I? What restaurant? What holiday? Where, who, with whom I am? So sometimes we're giving out personal details and putting ourselves at risk on our own. Sometimes we become our own citizen journalists and we need to be ethically and morally responsible for our own information. And imagine the situation gets more dangerous when I'm a citizen journalist putting information about others. 
So we also discussed yesterday a case that in uh, our country there was a case when a person had set himself on fire as a, a rebel against a government policy, and there were people on their mobile phones clicking his live video and posting it on uh, YouTube and other social media sites rather than trying to save the person. They were more interested in putting the live coverage of the event on the social media. So as ethical so uh, citizen journalists, we need to know where to draw the line in our own privacy and on others' privacy. We are to be responsible citizens. Before being citizen journalists, we are citizens. Before being citizens, we are humans. So our ethical, self-regulatory responsibilities do take wake there. I hope this concept is, uh, I mean, we all would be thinking about all this. But yes, bringing it today here on the class makes it more uh, you know, aware for all of us. We probably would be thinking, sitting in our rooms, of what's happening. But as journalists, bringing all this to shape is more important. Another thing is the use of hidden cameras. As I said, today, you don't need to purchase a very costly hidden camera. Your mobile can work as a hidden camera. So does this give us the right to spy on anybody and everybody? Does this give us the freedom of putting in anything and everything out there? So the use of hidden cameras also by journalists, by citizens, by human beings, by students, by children, by adults, it needs to be regulated and we all need to understand its power and also the misuse that it can cause, right? This brings me to the end of this unit, anything that you need to say. So we are talking about the need of self-regulation. This whole unit number three in your syllabus is being written. It is being written by a media expert, somebody more educated than me, and they put it all very nicely. To sum up, I would say that as journalists and as citizens, we all need self-regulation. The need of self-regulation has become all the more important because we come from different cultural and uh, uh, backgrounds. So this is all the more important. We all need to follow it. And there are certain codes like journalistic canons and other things that do govern uh, these codes, uh, these things. And so there have to be self-regulatory practices also. Anything that you would people uh, would like to give an input on? So this brings me to the end of unit three. I'll come to the next unit. So what I'll do is I'll stop sharing my screen and then I'll again reshare. Oh, yesterday we were facing a problem. I hope we don't face that problem today. Whenever I was stopping and I was uh, doing it again, it was creating a problem. Yes, friends, any inputs uh, on this? Hello, I think he, um, from the examples that I've, I've heard here, whether from Mauritius or from India, I think uh, we have common common examples because uh, mm -hmm. what uh, somebody was saying, like uh, Asta, what was she was saying, and even what uh, you, mom, you are saying, they're the very things that uh, are also happening down here uh, in Malawi. I'm also I've also been reading what the uh, alien has written there. Uh, they are the same things. Um, how uh, the citizen journalists are um, operating. And of course, here in Malawi, deliberately, uh, there was a time whereby even the hardcore uh, media were, were encouraging the citizen journalism. Um, the, we saw at some point that the, such uh, journalists were trained on uh, some ethical issues and uh, whatnot. All right. So, mm -hmm. despite that, but still more, we are experiencing some an ethical standard way of uh, handling uh, stories. Very right. Thank you. And I, I think this is very interesting to know that even though we are in different parts of the world and parts which are very, very different culturally, still the ethical needs and maybe the, I think this is what is globalization. We are all uniform at some core levels. And of course, there is diversity, but there is also a lot of uniformity. So I was really worried, friends, that when I was teaching this course to you, that we have more or less designed this course with context of India. And now that we will come, be coming to the specific laws, these laws are with Indian uh, constitution. But now I see oh, that I, it was uh, no much, not sorry. much of worry because this somehow does apply to all of us. Yes, please. Yes, Asta. 
I would, I would like to just add on what my colleague said. You know, something, uh, just an example of what happened with me for uh, about trolling, about citizen uh -huh. journalism. Yes. Last year, I, I'm, a, I'm a TV news anchor also. I was doing my news bulletin uh, on the day, uh, like my our ex-prime minister passed away and it was a special bulletin and all. And I was doing my bulletin. Uh, I, the cameraman zoomed out uh, from the screen and then my hairbrush was on the table. You know, he, he it, it came on air. And then when I finished my bulletin, uh, I was trolled for one week because uh, people pinpointed, oh, the, her brush was on the table, uh, she's a, a fashionista, or oh, some people took my side. You know, it, it was like they, they went on different social media platforms just making fun. Some people supported because I'm a woman, because but the harm was done psychologically. You know, people who were who were, who were professionals knew that okay, it was the 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 fault of the cameraman who who didn't frame it well. He should have told me to take out your hairbrush from the table. You know, mm -hmm. you, sometimes you, you leave your water, your bottle of water, and all. So coming to that to sum up is like, but but this thing, the when the harm is done, is done. You will go to 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 put gagging order, to pull down posts, to put pull down comments. So it, it comes on self media, uh, self ethics and self, you know, right. self rule. Yeah. I'm so glad that you shared this example, which this is a first hand experience that you've shared. And imagine you are a, you are a media professional and you are at a certain age where you could take this more maturely. Imagine this happening to a kid, to a teenager. How much do they associate people, value with their image? Even to you, I'm you know, sure people, it would not have been easy. No, morally, no, psychologically, no, because, you know, people are so bad because sometimes they go out, they, they come on your body, men comment on, on your body, they, 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 they drag you, people from the attention, from the brush and the news anchor, you know how people are, so how yeah. do you take all that? So this is a freedom of, this is a bad freedom sometimes, you know? Very true, very because true. because somewhere you are a daughter, you are you 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 are a wife, you are a friend, you 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 are someone in society. So so uh, this is the, the example you took of teenagers who commit suicide because when you're not strong, if you're not mature and you don't have uh, a guide, so so it can be very harmful to you psychologically. And thank you for sharing that. I would add a little to this. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, with coming of the social media and zero gatekeeping, like I told you. And another thing has got added to it, anonymity. I can just create an account without my real name. I might just keep my name something and anonymity. I am not coming out in the open. And because I'm not coming out in the open, nobody knows who I am. This gives me more power to say anything. Which probably I won't say if you know me. In your face, I would not dare to do that. But when you don't know me and when I'm a hidden person, I am like this hidden no one, a nobody. You can't harm, but I have this power to harm you. So this anonymity with the coming of the digital media, anonymous accounts, people get really ruthless. And imagine if this could be done to a simple human being like Asa, how do celebrities deal with it? You are body shamed. You are being pointed to your body when you're a simple human being. Imagine all these heroines. I mean, we have these actresses in our uh, cinema or film uh, community. And if an actress puts on certain weight, or if she loses hair, or say if she gets something on her face, people would comment on her face, on her body, on her weight, and body shame her. And because for them, so they, so there have been so many actresses in India who've come out and said, oh, my putting on little weight led me to psychological trauma because I've been trolled for that. Now people forget that this is a human being. Therefore, when we talk of ethics, now ethics in media do not have the limited capacity to journalists because we are all becoming journalists or reporters in a way or another in our own capacity we all need self regulation codes we all need ethical codes and because we might not ethically or regulatorily do our duties we need laws and this is the next unit i'm coming to unit number 4 in your syllabus which is related to new media laws so we've discussed a lot of new media and social media so this is the time which is right for bringing in how new media laws i hope the screen is visible this is next unit Friends, the screen is visible. You can see the uh, unit four me new media ethics. Yes, it's very visible on my part. Thank you. 
and thank you for bringing in the new media examples like in malai you said facebook can be an issue fake news can be an issue and she is telling in mauritius trolling can be an issue it is the same everywhere so this unit we would try to discuss the ethics related to new media so rights and ethical responsibilities of content creators understanding the digital rights of the creators the bloggers influencers whoever is creating content or simple people like you and me when we are creating content on our social media pages ownership issues copyright infringement it is very easy to have copyright infringement in new media you can write an article and i can just copy it and paste it on my place in my own name it was a little difficult when there were books now because there's just a control c control v button in all our computers and even in our phones with much more easier so open content versus free content copyright ownership issues understanding digital rights for uh, content creators as i said and uh, creative commons which is a uh, copy free thing we shall talk about that content curation and limits of sharing how privacy gets interfered in digital media news related ethical issues ethics for online marketers online marketers like ebay amazon flipkart walmart and any other sites that might be existing in your part of the country how the online marketers sometimes do flaunt ethics how they are being regulated rights and ethics of online readers as a consumer of the content how am i being governed or what are my rights and ethical con contents we shall also look at some of the violations of these ethics do's and don'ts for the new media and how can we deal with such ethical violations in quick 10 minutes i'll try and cover this unit i have i think i got very ambitious covering six units in one lecture but we didn't have an option i was given only four classes and we had a whole course to cover so quickly i'll go through this uh so we all understand with the advent of new technology we have a lot of world of information which has opened for us sometimes this is good information at other times it can also be information overload so today new media is a broad term which carries multiple meanings and interpretations it is changing in a way you know gradually and so fast we are interacting with our surroundings so in india chat gpt is big news these days and because it had a global launch i'm sure even in your part of the world chat gpt or other artificial intelligence softwares are being talked about so in india we have a indian penal system which defines indian penal codes and we have information uh, act 2000 which just had an amendment in 2022 we had an amendment for the information act we are all governed by that we are people are trying to regulate the social media posts we are now uh, the law or the police has the power to arrest some people if they put out social media posts which are um, ethically or more or so culturally demeaning so these kind of laws are being enacted in india laws will come in the next unit let me just talk of the ethics how do you define new media ethics you have all put out cases from there taking cues from your instances i would say that new media ethics can be defined as how we behave online and these can help us to decide that what are our etiquettes we all spoke of etiquettes and manners when we were children but now that we are grown up we need to learn something which is called etiquettes how do i respond to an email how do i respond to a social media post how do i talk to someone on openly on the internet so these are also certain etiquettes do i have the freedom of body shaming someone do i have the freedom of trolling someone for just putting a hairbrush on their uh, news desk which is a very necessary thing you know every time that uh, you are not in the shot you might want to do up your hair because you are in front of the camera in front of the audience as an audience do i have the right to comment on this should i be considerate enough and if i'm not considerate on my own should the laws be making me responsible so it is for both consumers as well as producers of new new media that they need to be aware of the ethical limitations in the online world a great deal of content is being created online we are all presumers producers as well as consumers i will consume your social media post but i will react to the post and i will produce a content so in this new role of presumers a great deal of content is being shared and created this content on the internet remains open it is transparent for everyone to see so we need to protect the rights of the individuals who are contributing and sharing their experiences and we also need to protect the rights of the people who are consuming this content 
new media ethics is about how appropriately to use the new media without breaching any law or infringing on the online rights of other users. We are all coexisting in this new media. Today, this class we are taking is with the help of new media. You're all placed in different parts of the world. And from New Delhi, I am able to take a class with you. But during this class, do I have the right to say something which might be unethical? Do you have the right to comment something which might hurt me? Is it our right? Is it a moral responsibility? So all this has been covered by new media ethics, rights and ethical responsibilities of the content creators. So in India, there is a copyright law which actually protects the right of my work. If I've written something, if you whether you can copy that or not. So I'm sure in your countries, there would be different copyright laws, but copyright laws exist in every country. So here we have copyright laws and information technology amendment acts have been there. There have been acts and there have been amendments to them. So these laws, there is one irony, you know, the new media has evolved much more quicker and faster than the law system or the judicial system of my country. And I'm sure even of your country, there are the next generations which are coming in so quickly with changing and evolving media and our laws have not been able to keep pace. And therefore, ethics and regulations become much more important. Though there are laws which are coming in, but the pace is slow. There is something very interesting in digital rights, which is called creative commons. So creative commons is something that is related to the ownership and copyright. So in, if I have something, if I've written a research paper or a news report, I can put it as a copyright free thing. So you are free to use it for educational purposes, or I might say for commercial purposes. So therefore, these days, a lot of photography is being done. Uh, you people do go to Google to see if you have to go somewhere. Do you read the reviews of a restaurant or of a salon or of any other place that you need to visit as a tourist? Do you read the reviews first? Because in India, we do a lot of review reading before buying into a product or a service. How do you people function on that? It's the same in Malawi, most especially when you are to um, say, for instance, if you are you want to buy a uh, say a screen a TV screen or even something bigger, you first of all um, you need to do a, a simple review and the understand of uh, what the, you want to buy. It's maybe advantages, disadvantages, and all, all those things. So here we do uh, read reviews. Even if I want to eat a burger or an omelette down the street, I will still see the reviews of that vendor. How are people writing about him? Is he a good, good cook? Is he serving well? Is he hygienic? So here we have reviews of almost everything. Now one thing, when you go to Google, how many of you have acted as Google guides? I have acted as a Google guide at times, which means that wherever I go, I click pictures or I uh, put in reviews there so that it is helpful for other people who want to come here. You all might be clicking pictures and posting them on Google, right? In India, many of the shopkeepers would ask you, ma'am, please post a review. Please post a picture of your experience of a shop or of a restaurant or of this uh, place. Even if I go to a simple barber or a simple roadside corner for uh, maybe a haircut, I still will be putting a review over there. So now, when I put my pictures, are you free to use my picture? Because that's, of course, my copyright. I am the producer of the picture. So here is something that comes as Creative Commons. So Creative Commons is a world platform where there are copy-free images, copy-free content, copy-free researches, which you can use. So there are different labels to it, whether you can use it for education purpose or commercial purpose. Uh, how many of you are familiar with the concept of Creative Commons? Have you heard of a concept called Creative Commons? Honestly, this is my first time. Okay. So next time when you go to Google or to YouTube to search something, you can actually put in the search bar, Creative Commons. So it will only show you videos or photographs or researches that are free to be used, where you are not infringing the copyright. So you can Google it and read more about it, and you can start using it so that you know more about it. Right? So these are about digital rights. So this uh, is where it makes it, free usage possible without infringing into the ethical concerns or without breaking any laws. So there are also ownership issues. 
the web shows up information readily whenever we need anything just on a click you can see a lot of information now that information is owned by somebody who's created it it might be copyright issue so lest you end up into a lawsuit where somebody says oh he's infringed into my copyright or she has used a picture that was mine creative commons resolves it for you if i put it there then you are free to use it right and uh, i will not go into the copyright laws because they might be different from country to country but the ethical concern is that uh to ensure that the artists or the writers or the researchers or the photographers who are contributing to a content are aptly compensated and they are motivated to contribute further if anybody and everybody steals my things why would i actually produce more original content uh you know this is more to do with the music industry also you might come across cases where people say okay this person has stolen the tune that i created or this story of a film was my book so therefore you must register for your story or your music creation or anything like that into a copyright law any copyright law that your country has so users tend to become careless about copy pasting so this desired information should not be an infringement into something so here this is open versus free content right so do you understand what does uh, digital rights management mean it actually means protecting the rights of the producers of online content so you should be able to distinguish between open and free content i would actually advise you to read about or creative commons read about the open content on the internet and i would also suggest that in future whenever you need to use a content it can be anything from a written piece to a video to a photographer as a teacher i need to use a lot of photographs or videos for my online lectures or even for my classroom teaching i should be aware and conscious that the content that i'm using is copyright free and open content so do you promise me that after this class you would actually read about uh, creative commons and do you also promise me that you will try to use content where you are not infringing into somebody's copyright do i take your word for that yes i guess <laughs> In, in academics, we use that we have got something called open access. So when we are publishing research, we use we have that Creative Commons. Really, open, uh, access. open access. Very true. Thank yes, you for that yes, word. Yes. yes, you should be using open access content or copy free content or Creative Commons content. And open access is a wonderful thing to use. So that as a producer or the content creator, I have given you the freedom to use my content, and you are not harming my need there. so content curation and limits of sharing we should all understand the work of curators is to pick most relevant content and exhibit in a way that is a quick glance that reveals most relevant links in one place so even when you are curating the content you should be careful about what limits you have on sharing so now in digital media of course there are issues like privacy we did talk of a example from one of our friends personally that how your privacy gets uh interfered into in digital world we can often find rampant violations of basic ethical needs at new media personal information about friends relatives like she said in light of when that you might just have taken a sick leave from your office whereas you might go shopping and somebody puts up a picture and your boss knows it boss you are in trouble so this is your personal decision so sometimes we do tend to interfere into the privacy or even of our loved ones family members or friends we should be careful about that news related ethical issues on new media are there uh, there is actually the principle of integrity professionalism privacy should actually be observed by journalists while they're putting news on new new media authenticity of what has to be posted there it is important even for employees to properly define their association with the publication so that they do not offend and they do not actually do such unethical practices so as citizens and also as journalists we need to be aware of such ethical issues for online marketers there is also a big issue as an online marketer in india we have had cci which is competitions uh, association about competitive markets they have been telling a lot of online marketers okay these are unethical practices how and why do i have the right of selling a thing online at a lower rate when offline it has a minimum mrp so in india mrp is a concept minimum purchasing a minimum uh, price of selling a thing 
right? So online, the things are being sold less than MRP. And many of the small businesses did suffer a lot because of this aggregated big online players. So there were been ethical issues that were being governed. And a lot of Indian laws did tell Google, Amazon, and other e-commerce platforms to stick to ethical pricing policies. Marketers associations have been raising concerns against them. All forms of advertising material online. All sorts of advertising material must actually be sharing the common goal of truth. And it should mean to serve the public. You should maintain a clear distinction between corporate communications, press releases. So other than the online marketers, also the advertisers. Like yesterday, we did discuss that sometimes a simple advertorial might not be a true piece of reporting by journalists. So this should also be adhered to in the ethical concerns. So whenever you're placing your ads, in no way should you obstruct the user's view. For example, I go to a site to read news, but the ads are there, which obstruct the view of the news. So my concern is the news and not the advertising, right? So whether you are selling on online platforms, or you are putting any other advertisements on online platforms, you should be ethical enough. Now, rights and ethics of online readers. This is another concern. Readers in the online world are very unaware of the data or the trails they are willing to give. For example, I'll give you a small example. On my mobile, whenever I put an app, I download an app, it asks me for permission. It says, give this app permission to your micro microphone, give this app permission for your camera, give this app permission for your contacts, for your SMS. And if I click no, the app will not be downloaded. So this is a necessary evil. As a compulsory thing to be able to use the services of that mobile application, I have to compromise my privacy. These days, whenever you go online, the website says, we are using cookies. And if you say, OK, agreed, it will allow you to use the website further. If you say disagree, the website will close down. So you do not have an option as an online consumer, reader, purchaser, buyer to say no. Right? I would like to know your views about something. In India, there's a rampant recent problem. We get a lot of spam calls. In my mobile, if I get 50 calls a day, it will not be an exaggeration to say that 30 of these calls are actually spam calls. My mobile rings and there is a video, a recorded audio on the other side that says, oh, you are eligible for a loan. Or there is an audio that says, join this slimming center. Or there is an audio that says, do you want to buy a property? So I'm taking a class and my mobile is ringing, dung, 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 dung. And there is an audio on the other side. I never gave my mobile number to these marketers. But they took this number from the data that I shared on my mobile applications or I shared on the billing counter of a restaurant. And they made these calls. These are digital privacy intrusions. Please tell me, how is the scene in your country about the spam calls? How is your privacy being intruded by the online callers or the mobile applications? If I'm not wrong, I think it's called wishing. Instead of phishing, it's a it's a it's a sub variant of phishing. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it here in Mauritius, it, it it's been uh, this type of cyber crime has been uh, on the search lately. Even I get calls from from people outside. What I do, what we have been told to do, is just block. But I've I've received calls of people telling me, oh, we are from this bank. We uh, we we need your password. We need this. We need that. And there are people who who have lost all their money them in their bank account. So one million rupees recently. A lady uh, informed the police. So that was a big report. A, a big big news in our. Uh, yeah, in in the media, so this is uh, especially my friends from Africa will 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 confirm that it it's uh, wishing is is a big uh, thing today. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for this. So this is one instance where financial uh, frauds are happening, and another instance you do get spam calls, and of course you are right. We are supposed to block them. So on an average, I block 35 mobile numbers on my mobile every day. So these are not frauds. They are just simple advertisers. They are just urging me 
to purchase into a service or a product oh ma'am purchase this holiday voucher oh ma'am can you take this property this is on throw away prices and i tell them i don't need it where did you get my number please delete my number but of course they're not deleting it so where is this data emerging my data is being sold whenever i log in into a website or into a mobile application my mobile number and my data including my income my place of residence is being sold this is a big intrusion so today to be using all these free services we are on google meet did you pay for google meet i did not i do not pay for my google mail gmail i do not pay for my google classroom i do not pay for my facebook i do not pay for my whatsapp somehow i do not even pay for some of the ott platforms i do not pay for an app on my mobile that prompts me to drink water every 30 minutes these are all free services but friends are they actually free i have not paid in money i think i have paid in my own terms i am the product who is being sold to them my data is being sold to them so i am on sale without my even realizing it this is another online concern this is to do with ethics of advertisers though i am an advertiser myself i run an advertising agency i do make advertisements i hate to say this but in my profession itself a lot of unethical unregulated practices are being followed and we do need laws to govern these online marketing scams i am not free all day i do not have time to attend these hundreds of calls who are trying to sell me products without my wish without my need right so online ethical violations are happening new media is a powerful tool to reach the people but it is sometimes misused for personal attacks for trolling for running malicious campaigns with intended or unintended consequences trolling is there and so many other things are there so we do have do's and don'ts for new media ethics when we post something in relation to a text we should point out the original text while commenting that this has been picked up from there this is called stealing this is called copyright infringement this is called plagiarism it is important that we are careful while posting data online and before doing this we must ascertain that this is true data and we must also know what are the long term consequences of such data we should be sensitive for the online readers who may represent different beliefs sensitivities sensibilities and cultures so as online readers as online producers as online consumers we must be aware ethical responsibility lies with us so does self regulation so friends to sum up in this unit we did see what are new media ethics and why we need them and what are some of them that we can follow also did this make sense did that help you to be a little aware i'm sure all these issues we do know but do we are we more careful about them now on yes i i guess i will be blocking most uh, most uh, uh, scammers from now <laughs> oh my god that is a not a good in, thing in why do i have to block them <laughs> you, you know i my my own experience um, i i i came to india and when uh -huh. i came when i got my indian number i was very shocked with uh, this uh, what advertising sms is and because i was very shocked because in malawi we don't have that much when i came to india i was literally very shocked so i think india has a lot of way to go on that mm -hmm. but i'm i'm really glad that your country has better circumstances with concern to this Uh, so friends we have finished one block uh, i will take another half an hour to go through the second block of our course do you need a break do you need a tea break a water break a loo break do you need to actually uh, want me to pause for 2 3 minutes I didn't get an answer to that. Somebody is saying no. Yes, 
Oh, you putting that in the chat box? Let's continue, ma'am. Okay. In Ghana, it is more with SMS. 90% of the messages you get in a day are from financial companies and loan companies. Oh, I'm glad that some other people are facing the same issues that we are. Well, you're saying we want to come and continue, Aminal. Thank you for that. Uganda. So somebody is told in the chat box, in Uganda, the citizen journalism is taking shape. And actually, some media organizations have taken the initiative of training active community members on the basics of new news writing and the citizen journalists were given smartphones to help their coverage. That is a really nice step. So I'm, I'm just taking a break from the thing. I'm reading your comments on the chat box. While I was speaking, I was not able to read them. So I'm, I'm really glad on these inputs that this is a very good step. Even in India, there are some organizations that do try to train citizens as journalists, but also there are many stringers associated with the news organizations and they face all this. I'm glad on joining today. Sorry, my mic is muted. Yaminil, thank you. Okay. Oh, apologies accepted. I'm glad you're joining. You people don't need a break, but I'll, I'll just take a two-minute break. I'll just drink some water. I'll give a little rest. I've been speaking for 90 minutes constantly. And then just 120 seconds, I'll just join back. <laughs> Hence, I'm taking a break. You are free. Please continue the interaction. You can speak to each other. I'm just giving you a two-minute thing. Please, con please speak to each other. Please speak to me. I'm hearing, but just, just giving my throat a rest for uh, some hundred seconds now. Well, I'm back. Why was there so much of silence? You people could have spoken and interacted. If you were sitting in a physical classroom, I'm sure you would be talking by now. Okay, just, just tell me a little tidbits. Can you all, uh, somebody who can switch on their camera? Let's just have a small interaction. Do you know each other in the class by now? You people have had how many classes? Uh, do you know School of Journalism? What do you understand about it now? How, how, who are my other colleagues who have taught you by now? How's been your experience this far? Do you know each other? Are you friends with each other in the class? How are you faring on the assignments? Just, just tell me normal things for, for a minute and then we'll go to the next block and we'll quickly cover the four units in that block. I'd be really glad to know you all, my friends. So how's been your experience here? Have you there? Have you vanished? How are you guys? I can see five of you there. Last time, you know. 
लाने सो फार सो गुड मेरे मेजर चैलेंज इज विद एलिमेंट्स व्हाट्स द चैलेंज यू नॉट बीन गेटिंग द स्टडी मटेरियल well friends okay and um, thank you thank you for bearing with me in the break are we there should i begin with the next uh, thing please switch on your mics and tell me are we there should i begin uh the re uh, for me I i'm reading the the messages also at the same time <laughs> yeah even i was yeah. reading the messages in the break i was like uh, for us same thing i i think i will it's the same thing uh, that my colleagues are saying as i when we we are, when we are working it's a challenge uh, to do the assignments but we are getting there because we got some deadlines and uh, we got the deadline so yeah Yeah, you can't <laughs> but, your submitted assignments because so that you should be very careful before submitting. Please do all the editing and then submit. Yeah, you. I realized because you know some. Uh, I already su submitted uh, w when we didn't get the deadline, so uh, I submitted. So when I when we were announced, and then the deadline was extended, and you were like, okay, can yeah. I edit it? Now? So now I cannot. <laughs> It's done now. Can it's like an exam paper. It. You've given it to the examiner now. No looking back. <laughs> Yeah. And how the experience getting back to studies? Because I assume most of you are working professionals, and um, it might be a break uh, between your, you know, last uh, student life and this. So how's the experience coming up now? Uh, when you're working and you're you're studying, it's different. And I've I've, I've done my bachelor from India only, from Delhi, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and then yeah, yeah, and then I did my MBA uh, later on, uh, but. Uh, Uh, when you work it's been like i did my nba uh, i finished it in 2018 so after five years now almost i'm doing i'm studying it again and it's quite academic so yeah it's 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 challenging <laughs> it's challenging uh -huh. to to yeah to 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 go read and write again working and elane is saying it is fine ma'am so far so good thank you elane for being uh, with us even when you were in the salon so um yeah how are the boys or the, the boys are not saying something uh, the girls are taking over today huh okay friends we have almost 30 minutes now and i am getting a little ambitious it took me yesterday's full class and today's uh, 90 minutes to do one block which constituted of four units but i plan to do the next block that's in the next four units within next 30 minutes which shouldn't be much of a problem because these are more to do with the indian constitution so i would actually refrain from explaining to you the laws but we will discuss the need of these laws more or less so that it becomes relevant for you also i don't expect you to you know uh, memorize or know about the indian constitution you should know about it but it's you it would be good to know about your own laws when you are working in those areas so just as a reference point we will discuss this i will finish the next four units i will try my best to do it by the end of this class we had a two hour class and if something gets left of course we'll be meeting next saturday and we can continue from there so i'm coming to block number 2 which is more to do with the indian laws we were reading about ethics and self regulation in the previous block so the first unit that is is indian constitution uh, so a brief about the indian constitution i hope you can see the screens i've shared this uh, presentation of unit 5 which is indian constitution in this unit the structure is that i would discuss about the constituent assembly the salient features of the constitution where we have the preamble the federal system fundamental rights fundamental duties directive principles of state policy and then union and state legislatures judiciary inter state relations then the public service the special provisions relating to uh, you know certain cases emergency provisions and the amendments in the constitution so i will not go con uh, very contextual with this i mean not very uh, literary with this but i will use this as a broad perspective to give you an idea so this is to do with the the indian constitution 
so if i talk to you this is the first uh, unit of this block the next block that we are coming to uh, this block is called media laws and here we will acquaint you with the salient features of the constitution it is important for you as a media personnel to understand the basic tenets of constitutions to discharge your duties and functions effectively but then it is important for you to know the tenets of the constitution of your country or the country or the place where you would be functioning or practicing so in the legal sense the constitution of our country is actually a system of fundamental laws or principles that are related to governance of that nation so here in indian constitution let me just give you a very very basic idea so indian constitution uh, we had a constituent assembly as you know india was a british colony and we got our independence in 1947 the british government for the first time actually explicitly accepted the demand for a constituent assembly uh, in august 1940 that was when we were still a british colony and this mission was uh, proposed and there was a 389 member constituent assembly with approximately one member for every million of the population so that is the ratio they divided and they actually the framed a constitution uh, which is considered the best features of the constitution uh, of the other countries so we are really proud as indians of our constitution because it's considered that this committee took into consideration a lot of other constitutions that were functioning and the best of so many other constitutions was taken into being and the indian constitution was framed so uh, we adopted these features and according to the needs and the context of the indian a uh, country we actually took this constitution was framed the, there are salient features to this this constitution has distinction of being the one of the most lengthy constitutions and it's a detailed and most lengthy document uh, so we as indians really feel proud in saying that for a proper understanding of the indian state and polity you should be actually be going through the salient features of the constitution briefly which we will discuss in these sections now so this is to do with our constitution i'm giving you this as a context again and i'll go through this very quickly so that you actually are able to look at something that is more relevant to you in your context so in india our constitution starts with a preamble and a preamble talks of equality of status and opportunity uh and we are trying to make laws to promote this equality of status and equal uh, opportunity amongst all our citizens so this preamble says that irrespective of the caste community religion region every citizen of india would have an equality in every case of opportunity state governance and status so i am not going to the exact word and there is something very beautiful as students in india whenever we are in our school the first page of, of all our textbook actually has the preamble imbibed there so as children as growing up indian citizens we have been seeing that preamble in every book of our hours so this is a beautiful way of telling the young citizens who are growing that this is what your country's a uh, judicial system or constitution stands for so now there are certain elements of our pop, uh, constitution there is federal system federalism is a system of division of political power between the center and state governments so give you broadly an idea india is divided into different states which have different religion uh, sorry regional connotations so there is a whole center where we have a prime minister and there is a central system of governance and then this is divided into smaller units just for the ease of governance where we have chief ministers and governors so equivalent to the prime minister and the president at the center we have chief ministers and governors at the state and each state has its own uh, federal powers so federalism in each country has its maybe own uh, the characteristics depending upon the historical evolution of the country or the present need of the country the general trend in uh, india until 1947 until we got our independence was to work out a federal system with the measure of the autonomy of the provinces so the constituent uh, assembly that modified this trend in the draft constitution that we had this was modified because the major challenges that occurred in form of the large scale outbreak of communal violence regional pools collapsing economy keeping all those needs in mind this federal system was reworked in our constituent assembly so the constitution as of today gives general supremacy to the union parliament and executives in all matters that are related to the state especially matters really like making of the laws 
Uh, it also includes the state list at times. So uh, larger things lie with the center and certain regional requirements are being allotted to the uh, state. So the union has authority to create new states and also to adjust the boundaries between the states. And within them, the states do function. So more or less, the trade laws or the governing laws are same for the entire country. And there are certain other lists which lie with the state. This is our federal system. Now, another element of Indian constitution is fundamental rights. There is a bill of rights for, uh, uh, there's a bill of rights in American constitution. So as I told you, the Indian constitution is known for the beautiful fact that it took uh, a lot of good points from many other constitutions across the world. So in American constitution, there is a thing called the bill of rights. In the French, there is declaration of rights for the man. In the Irish constitution, also, we have such things. And then there is a human rights, a universal human rights charter by United Nations organization. Taking its cues from all these documents, the fundamental rights in India were given. So the fundamental rights are rights related to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, and also the right for constitutional remedies. So this is another very beautiful thing that our constitution does not say that I am the Bible which cannot be amended. No, our constitution says I am a document which can be amended as and when there are new needs emerging in the society. As and when the society progresses, even the constitution can progress. So a right is being given by the constitution to the uh, governing bodies to place amendments in certain laws with the changing needs and tenets of the society. So we have a lot of fundamental rights as citizens. Then there are directive principles of the state uh, policy. So the, the state shall adhere to the welfare of the... So these are the principles given to the governing body. That whenever you are governing a state, you shall think of the larger welfare of the citizens. The state shall actually uh, you know, make policies towards security of the citizens. What are the things that the state is responsible for. These are given by the directive principles of the state policy. Uh, so the state shall actually secure the right to work, education. So whatever are my fundamental rights as, my, as a citizen, I can actually go to my state, to my government, to the uh, you know ruling uh, parties or some uh, ruling states, and I can ask them to protect my fundamental rights. So if somebody is trying to attack me, I can go to my state and say that it is my fundamental right to be secure in this country. Please provide me this security. It is my fundamental right to get education. Please provide me free education. So that is how a state is being governed by these directive principles of the state policy, that the state shall ensure participation of the workers. It should give them education, employment, security, safety, the freedom to speak out, the freedom to practice their own religion. So all this is to be ensured by the state. So the state shall also see the endeavors to secure the promotion of uh, international peace and security, maintenance of just and honorable relations between nations, respect for international law. So not only the local law, but even the international and global laws have to be adhered by. And then there is something called fundamental duty. The Constitution of India says that no right is absolute. Rights come with duties. And you know, as children, we are actually taught this by our parents generally, world, across the world. We are told that you might have a right, but your rights are also governed by duties. I have a right to sleep all day. But I also have a duty to go to the school. I have a duty later in my life to earn, to fend for my family, maybe as a woman to cook or uh, as, a, as a mother to go out and earn for my children. So these are my duties. I can't say I have a right to sleep. I have a right to speak out. But I have a duty to see that whatever I'm speaking is not hurting you when you are my colleague or another fellow citizen. So these are also fundamental duties to abide by the Constitution and respect its ideas and institutions to actually cherish and follow the noble ideas which are inspired for national struggle for freedom was there. So I should be respecting my freedom fighters. I should uphold and uh, protect the sovereignty and unity and integrity of India. I should defend the country and render national service whenever I'm called upon. I should be promoting harmony amongst the people to value and uh, you know preserve the rich heritage of my country. So it is my right to go 
uh, to certain uh, tourist places, but it is my duty not to harm those tourist places by writing on the uh, historical monuments or by spreading garbage. So my constitution has fundamental rights, certain duties for the state which are directive principles, certain duties for the citizens which are known as fundamental duties. Okay. So to safeguard public property, to not instigate communal violence, all this. So in your country also, is your constitution federal or unitary, I would like to know? Are there fundamental rights and duties in your constitution also? Yes, uh, uh, as for now, I think we, more, we have more or less a similar uh, constitution uh, mm -hmm. as far as the, maybe the only uh, difference would be the way how these things have been structured. And the, maybe what we don't have is the first federal system that uh, maybe I've uh, noted in your constitution. We don't have that one. But uh, the fundamental uh, duties, rights, and the other things, uh, I think we also have those, uh, maybe those. I mean, even the arrangement of the constitution, of your Indian constitution, it's uh, more or less the same because in the preamble, in our constitution, the same, they are recognizing the people of Malawi, uh, um our presidents and the, all those things so the sovereignty that we have the emblems floods and whatnot they are all being discussed in the first chapter and the, great, uh, great. i'm so glad and to the, know that there are similarities out there and I, as global citizens we are more or less governed by similar kind of uh, things that's a beautiful this, thing this, to give us the, rights yeah. as citizens you know yeah. duties everybody tells us but also as citizens we have rights this is something really nice that our constitutions do to us but maybe the, the only the only the only uh, difference the major one would be that the, as you are putting it yours is very lengthy, but ours is very summarized because it has got the uh, twenty or so chapters in total. Uh -huh. It's very brief. Okay, great. Well, uh, yes, ours yes. is a very lengthy one. It's in fact the lengthiest in the whole world. <laughs> to know that. Uh, so uh, the constitution gives union and state legislators different powers. There can be bills that we can raise in the parliament. There can be amendments. There can be new things that we can begin. So there are just some things that we are not allowed. A money bill cannot be introduced in the Rajya Sabha. The Rajya Sabha has no power. So we have two houses of legislature, Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha is a higher uh, who. So we are all our elected representatives. They sit and make these decisions. So whether a particular bill is a money bill or not is to be decided by the Speaker of the Lok Sabha. So the Rajya Sabha cannot have a money bill. So they, they, these are some things which are very uh, regional to India. So uh, union and state executives are there. The Constitution of India actually talks about a president who is indirectly elected for a term of five years, a prime minister who occupies a key position who is elected by the citizens through certain proper democratic elections. Then there is judiciary. So in our uh, country, judiciary holds the highest power. It is powerful, more powerful than the government. There is an original jurisdiction. There is a writ jurisdiction, appellate jurisdiction, advisory jurisdiction, and there are miscellaneous jurisdictions. These are, again, country specific. So I'll not go into the details because this is not something that probably would be very useful to you. But there are center and state relations that are there, legislature relations, administrative relations financial relations, relations for planning and development and for trade and community, you know, the center cannot say, oh, this is a state responsibility. And the state cannot say, oh, this is not my responsibility. Center has to look after it. <coughs> Sorry. They have to jointly also look at certain things and they need to have cordial relationships. So there are chances, you know, there might be different political parties who might be ruling at the center and there might be very different regional political parties ruling in the state. So they might not get along politically. But for the benefit of the nation and for the benefit of the citizens, they have to make certain joint decisions. And the constitution makes them abide by this. So uh, who is the head of the union executive, the states in India, whether they can be made or not, this is all governed by center state relationships. Then for the larger public good, the standard and efficiency of administration in any country actually depends on the uh, ultimate, uh, you know, caliber, training, integrity of the members of the public service. So the Article 309, there are different articles in a constitution, and there are many of them being the lengthiest competition, uh, constitution. This article empowers the parliament and the state legislatures to regulate the recruitment and conditioning of the service of the public servants and who has to be there. So even there, these are the powers. 
there is another article article 310 that ensures that all members of the defense services or the civil services of india uh, hold a office uh, you know uh, for a particular time so that they can be responsible for enacting these uh, services for the public good there are also certain special provisions related to certain clauses in the parliament so there can be provisions like article 330 342 that make provisions for reservations of seats so in india there is another thing because we are a very culturally different community and there are certain communities which have been very exploited in the past so our constitution makes provision for giving them reservations in education in jobs or certain financial regulations so that these reservations make these communities empowered so to bring an equality to certain communities who have not enjoyed powers in the past we have certain schedules in our constitutions that places the and certain tribes who might not be very developed who might be backward tribes to to place them at equal grounds our constitution has special provisions of providing reservations then there are certain emergency provisions to you know protect a country its unity its integrity or its financial uh, you know powers there can be emergency provisions that can be enacted and there is also a thing where the constitution uh, you know talks of amendments where it can be amended by certain bills in our parliaments in lok sabha and rajya sabha and they can be amendments from time to time and there have been many many amendments in our constitution uh, you know the extent of creative uh, and executive powers have been different uh, so you know amendments actually should be made keeping certain things in mind that supremacy of the constitution will still be their sovereignty of the unity of india democratic uh, the democratic nature of the constitution or uh, the secular nature of the nature of the constitution all these should be maintained and then the amendments can be accept, made so uh, i will not go in much much detail this was just a very uh, brief or a summed up introduction to the constitution of my country so that you understand this a little and i'm sure all your constitutions can be something similar so these are really nice things in a democracy to provide a constitution and rights and duties to the citizens certain rights and duties to the governing bodies certain rights and duties for amendments for uh, you know protecting the country and the citizens so uh, this was a brief introduction i did not want to have a detailed thing on this i'll go to the next unit if you people permit me and if not then uh, we can sum up the class Do you want to be here for a little more time? Then I can go to the next unit in this chapter, uh, this block. And if you don't want to, then we can sum up and we can do this the next time. Your views, please. Do we have time? Do we have other things to do? I am good to go for next ten minutes or something. Unit six, if you want to cover. maybe you can call it a day that uh, we yeah, can continue it's almost uh, in 2 hours yes, yes. So we we've already done five units next time i'll try to be a little quicker uh, i should ideally be have done two blocks in these two classes but good enough we started the next block and i'm sure all of you have certain professional responsibilities and other things so i'll not take more time i'll be really glad to meet all of you next saturday at the same time if you want to change the time uh, class of the time you can actually message uh, and tell us it does this time suit all of you do you want to change the time i'm getting certain things in the chat box mm. everything is fine ma'am we are friends this is for the earlier chat is this time good with all of you next weekend do we want to change the time for the class do we want to meet at other times okay you can take decisions and you can maybe write us a mail and tell us what time you want the next class i'll have two more classes with you it was a pleasure being with all of you any feedbacks any last summing of words that you want to give before we call it a day before we sign off but maybe before we call it a day can you maybe punch your email address on the uh, in the chat, chat box of your course, email address of course of yes. course of course i'm just putting it in the chat box uh, i'll be glad to get questions anything and one more request while i'm writing the email here this is padmini jan at the rate igno.ac.in it is there for all of you there 
If you people are on WhatsApp, you can send me a message if you want to. This is my phone number. And the code of my country that you will need to put before the phone number would be plus nine one. Friends, it was a real pleasure for me to meet all of you. If there is any time in the uh, change in the time that you wish to have, you can inform me. Any feedbacks, I'll be really glad to get. We have covered five units. We have fifteen units in this uh, course. So uh, in the next classes, I'll probably have to do five units a day. So I think I was a little better today. I did two units yesterday. I did three today. So in the next class, I have reasons to believe we can cover five each. And I would request you to go through the content so that we can discuss. It would be more nice, you know, to have a discussion rather than this uh, top-down approach of teaching. This is counseling class, and it's not a teaching class as such. But whatever model you want me to follow, I'll be glad to do that. So we're looking at ten more units in the next week. Two more classes to go, or two more counseling sessions to go. Each of you will have to switch on your mic and say something before we call it a day. Please, friends, begin. This is my right to ask for feedback. It is your duty to give me a feedback. On that joke, please, please share something. Uh, okay, I, th I think it was it was a nice class. Uh, like yesterday's, I, I think these. This, uh, I think this topic is very interesting because uh, I think for most of us, we, we do relate to uh, um, maybe our waking day life. So I, I think it was a nice class for me. Thank you, Simon. That really feels yeah. good to know that. Thank you. It was really a very uh, fruitful session, ma'am. From my side too, from Mauritius, I'm uh, I'm glad to be part of of your session. Someone wrote yesterday something very nice that we uh, those who 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 have missed uh, like a, a very nice session. So uh, thank you for your input, and I look forward to having you next week. Thank you, yes. Asa, for those beautiful words, and thank you to that someone who wrote a compliment that that feels good. That's kind of an encouragement for a teacher because. You know, I I really worked hard. It was a challenge for me to cover one block in each class because we usually are used to covering one topic uh, in each class. So here, when I have only four classes for an entire course, I did not know how to go about it. Even I was not sure if I'll be able to do this. You know, four chapters, one class, and I've been really slow. Sorry for the slow speed. I'll try to cover up, guys. Thank you, Asta. Not only good words. You can give me a harsh feedback also so that I improve. Others, please. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Asta. Elane, can you switch on your mic? Do you want to write in the chat box? Aminal, Gondwe. Yes, maybe. Um, just as maybe Simon has said, um, I've really enjoyed your 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 your, your conversations, and they, they they have much. They, we we are like very much relating to what is the. Uh, even happening to uh, our individual countries because uh, as you had uh, like said it that uh, india was uh, colonized by the britons we malawians are also colonized by the same so uh, most of the things i, I feel like uh, they, we are not as uh, uh, strangers total strangers uh, to your to your, to your so we feel related uh, and sessions. we feel similar yes. not that such a yes. nice thing yes yeah so they can be a global uh, similarity. That that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, thank you. Ilane has written. I enjoyed the discussion. Thank you, Ilane. Mm, okay. So anything that you people need to say? See, guys, give me feedback so that you can have an improved class next time. And how did you enjoy the other classes? How were my other colleagues? You've been interacting with them before you met me. I, I really hope it was beautiful. But basically, in a nutshell, in a nutshell, even uh, the previous classes that uh, we've had, uh -huh. we have had uh, very good sessions with the uh, previous uh, lecturers. I mean, I'm I'm just enjoying this. I'm I'm enjoying this because yeah, maybe, maybe I didn't say it, I, I didn't say it. Um, I'm I'm a journalist by profession myself too. But uh, though I'm not practicing because I'm also a lecturer elsewhere, but uh, mm -hmm. still more, 
I'm, I'm enjoying and I'm learning a lot from uh, uh, you people. Thank you. I'll pass that on to my other colleagues also. They'll also be glad to know that you enjoyed our efforts. So that, that feels good, friends. And I'm glad to make friends uh, from so many different countries. And I'm really glad, like what you just said, Simon, that we are all similar somewhere. Uh, and so this is maybe the globalization has caught on. It's good to know all of you. And even if you are wary of giving me bad feedbacks here, you can give them me on the mail. I'll, I'll be glad to take feedbacks and improve for your next classes. These lectures are recorded. I think you can have access to them later. So this is Dr. Padmini Jain signing off, saying bye-bye, all the best. Have a great day. Looking forward to meeting you over the next weekend. Bye for now on. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.